Cheers. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Monday, Monday, November the 8th. Very important week coming up here for a number of reasons. Uh, we're looking at the Dow at this particular point at 36,459, up 132. Earlier in the day, it was up at 36,565. Very interesting, the numbers that are, are uh, these days. We looked at, was it, 36,484, just the symmetry in some of the numbers. I'm just always fascinated with that, not the point. Point is, all-time high. As we're speaking, this is an all-time high. Looking at the monthly chart, see the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. We're going to see if there is a repellent zone uh, over the next week or so. In fact, we will see if there is a pullback, and that pullback takes the Dow to maybe – Four sessions ago, the lower four sessions ago, maybe a 35,800. That's, that's actually a big move, 600 points down. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, this is very good action. There are only two technicals here that suggest that there could be a pullback. One is the on-balance volumes, a little bit, not a little bit, quite a bit overbought. Uh, the MACD is good. Stochastic is at 93.91. That's great. That's what we're always looking for. The relative strength is rising. Another good sign. The nine period moving average is way over the 14 period moving average. The price is way above the nine. The nine support now is at 38,000. And uh, let me just get that exactly right 38,000. Yeah, it's around about 38,100. 38, 36,100. And we're going to be following this really closely. So for subscribers to Open and Call, we, we've taken some protective measures here uh, just uh, for overall portfolio. I'm, I'm looking at this and suggesting that for that nine period to cross negative, to go pink underneath the 14 period moving average is green right now. Probably the Dow would there'd have to be bad news that just tanks the market immediately. Um, and if, if it's not Slow, a slow rollover that makes lower highs and lower lows until eventually the nine just automatically crosses under the 14 period moving average. If we're talking about speed, to get the MACD to go negative, to get the stochastic under 80%, to get the nine under the 14 period significantly, you'll have to get the price down to the 35,800 to 35,700 level. And it'll have to be, it'll have to be bad news that sees the volatility index no good it trading uh it's at 16.95 right now it's actually at 45 cents no good to see that uh hanging around in the 16s i would even say 17s it would have to be in the 20.30 area or higher above the 200 moving day moving average of 19.44 so just make it as simple as possible looking i'll just go back s p just to show you the, the weekly chart very strong goes right into the chapman wave inside track repellent zone right there this is beautiful up channel and within the up channel you've got a very narrow a mini channel right there and that's look how it's repelled the price every time it's gotten there we'll see if that happens this week and it's now up five at 47.02, made an all-time high on Friday of 47.18.50. So far, it's under that, and that's important. And this is still a leg B in the Chapman Wave methodology for the monthly chart. And believe me, uh, I, I don't know how many times we've seen this, not hundreds of thousands of times, but really many hundreds of thousands of times over the, the, the 18 years I've been here, um, where you see monthly charts very seldom ever have we seen a major failure after a peak B at all-time highs. Usually you'll get the pullback to make a peak B, we're still in leg B, and then you come out with a leg C, then a peak C, and then a leg D, and then a peak D, and that takes you into early 2022. So regardless of how severe any decline is over the next, uh, going into the end of the year, the beginning of the year. Oh, I should mention uh, tomorrow a week I'm going to be the, the guest speaker for BIG, the Boston Investors Group, 
and it will be online. I'll give you all the information over the week as we move along. It should be quite exciting because this is going to be an exciting week. So we're looking at the S&P weekly monthly chart still extremely strong. But wait a minute. The QQQ has made a, a leg D at 400.99 in the daily. It did this propeller, Chapman Wave propeller shaft one-to-one -one expansion in, in virtually the same angle and the same number of bars. It's made it, so far, it's got a leg C. It'll be a peak C if we don't go one penny above the 400.99 high of Friday. And then I suspect Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, we just have another pop to D. And then I think we've got to start being very careful. And I'm still calling this an F. Leg F in the weekly chart right up against resistance. Uh, we'll see where this is going to go. But technically, on balance volume is the, and is the only thing so far that says, whoa, rather overextended. The nine period moving average is way above the 14. The MACD is very strong, hasn't even st just starting to see the histogram, the, the vertical lines uh, narrow a little bit. But they're still very strong. That's the difference between the nine period differential green right there and the and the pinkish or red uh, 26 period exponential moving average. Look, 95.60 is the stochastic. That's fabulous. That is really good. So it's going to be, as I say, the only way I can see this really tanking is if there is a pullback based on something happening in the economy, something being said, whatever it is, is going to probably have to be with uh, the, um, it'll have to be with something in the news. 244.46, let me move this away because that's obsolete from Friday. Little doji candle so far, the day's, uh, what, not even an hour into the f first part of the trading day. And the IWM has made an all-time high. This is the Russell 2000 small caps, gone to leg D in the monthly chart, leg D in the uh, weekly chart. I'm still calling this an F in the a daily chart uh, and here again to go from this level of 243.45 to get the green nine period to break under the 14 to get the MACD to actually start turning down to get the stochastic at 90.99 only the on balance volume is extremely overbought to get this to really tank you would have to see something happen that takes the price way way below two 230 to 228. That's the, that's the area of support that we were looking at. And here we are at 243. So, so far, still very strong. Let's go to the SMHs, semiconductor index. Is that starting to pull back a little bit? Yep. Made new all time high today of 300.20. Leg E, uh, doji candle on Friday, but it made another high. If it closes above the 299.74 high of Friday, that's going to be very important. But if it closes underneath, it says that the close, the open and close of the doji candle on Friday, around about the 293.97 area, if there is a close below that, it says, watch out, you're starting to see some weakness on the daily. <laughs> Weekly is still strong. Monthly is still very strong. All right, let's get to the nitty gritties of gold. Gold is up six at 18.23. I said last week, if it can get into the 18.22 or higher area, that's going to be very good, certainly surpassing 1801, the 200-period exponential moving average on Friday is very good action. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So uh, what we're looking at here is that silver broke out of that Chapman Wave falling exclamation. It's running quite nicely. It's up at 25 cents at 24.41. The 200 period moving average of 24.60 is the resistance, and it made its last high at a peak D in the Chapman Wave. We're always looking for that fourth highest peak, peak D to see what's going to happen. And it hit 24.92 on the 22nd, <clears throat> and then pulled back uh, quickly and quite sharply to uh, 23 0.045. Now it's rallying. Let's look at I-grade copper. I-grade copper is in the lower uh, trading part of the range, and it's at 4.38. It's up a little bit, 0.04. <clears throat> it's trying to make a little bit of recovery. Maybe tomorrow it can hit 4.42 or 44. We'll see what happens. But this is going to be very interesting. Look at the dollar. <clears throat> dollar had a good rally, made a new recovery high. Is that a G? Is that a B? I don't know just yet. And it has pulled back, but it's in the higher part of the range. So the, the dollar at this particular point still shows strength. Not today. It's a little bit weaker, but it's still showing strength going towards the recovery highs that it's been making. And now what's really important is if we look at the EUR USD, the euro dollar currency pair, made the dreaded H, took out the left side low, went to a leg D. Now it's trying to bounce. It can do that because the MACD barely pulled back. So there is some in, in, internal strength, and that's what we're looking at here for the euro. Uh, can the USDJPY continue matching the, the dollar? Well, it has, but now it's pulled back quite sharply from that peak F. Doji candle that we're looking at on the 20th at 114.69. Now it's at 113.10, sort of arching over dreaded H pattern. That's the pattern we were looking at where it looks like a lowercase h. Takes out the left side low. So we're watching this very closely. A couple of things. Uh, I think, did I mention Bitcoin here or did I do just in the uh, update? So Bitcoin <clears throat> made a peak D in the Bitcoin futures. Remember, we, we for subscribers, we still long just a little bit. We're taking huge profits all the way up from way back when we got long in the 12,000s, 12.41, uh, 12.48 in the uh, GBTC, the Bitcoin uh, fund and uh, and we were looking at the divergence the discrepancy between that fourth highest peak peak D and the daily chart is 68,030 all-time high the weekly did this left side right side price time match 
uh, and it got to a higher high above the 66,310 high that was made back, I think it was early May, uh, before tumbling to the 28,000 level. And here we are, I mean, this is just absolutely amazing, at, at 65,945, up 4,565 and 65,094. And what I'd say to subscribers is maybe we're looking at the GBTC that can go to a leg D to match the uh, Bitcoin futures. Well, 52.68 was the high that was made in October. That was a peak C. No other way I could count that. And lo and behold, today we went to 52.57, nine cents away. So at worst, it becomes a peak C1, peak C2. But my, my thinking is, and one of the reasons that I wanted to play it, but it's so difficult because this particular Bitcoin investment trust doesn't trade overnight like the Bitcoin futures. So it means that if you're wrong, I mean, just look at this. There's a there's a move of almost 7% today. So if we were short, for, no, I wouldn't be short, but let's just imagine we were short at 48.82. You'd have to cover today at that gap up. That, I mean, that's a big thing. And it could have been worse, could have been less, but this is what it is. And that's that's tough. So what I am saying is that uh, we've still got that little, the tiny position that's, that's left. And that's all we were holding right now. I did miss an opportunity right here when it broke out after that gap right there at 40 in the 42 43 area i said gee maybe we should try and I, I i think we missed it um so what can i say i think you do your best and you that's all you can do so it seems to me bitcoin and what i've been saying is that gold has changed its stripes just in the shorter term over the last week why because i said that gold is losing its favor as the trading vehicle because Bitcoin took it over, even though the prices are just hugely different, but Bitcoin took it over. And then I was anticipating soon we would start to see gold become not just an intraday trade, but more of a trend trade as Bitcoin starts to slow down. And I think we're getting close to that right now. We're not there. You still have that weekly chart. Let me just show this right now. I don't want to take too much time here in the overview for the week, but this says, that the left side high where it failed and I had said this is so unusual there's no other way I can count it as a peak C in the weekly chart of the GBTC uh, the Bitcoin Investment Trust but I, I'm gonna have to do that and it certainly failed at 58.22 back in uh, the week of the 16th of February and it had a little bit of a tumble going down to the 24s and now it's all the way back and it seems to me that the monthly leg C at 48.65 will be tested and broken at some point. So maybe we get just a bit of a sideways move and then Bitcoin starts to move again. And that's where we're going to be following what happens to gold. I, I didn't do the TLT in, in detail, but now I will. That peak D is what we're always looking for in the Chapman wave. That's just part of the basic philosophy that says you, within the context of higher highs, I try to identify for subscribers a lower low and then uh, at least an identifiable low from which you can start a rally and then count each successively higher peak, doesn't matter what time frame, doesn't matter what vehicle, and alphabetize them A through G alphabetically, uppercase on the way up. But it's at that fourth highest peak B that, that other things can happen, but your target is to go from a buy signal to a buy mode and the buy mode implies there should be at least a peak d a fourth highest peak that's why i'm saying the s p is only a leg b it should still make a peak b make a leg c make a peak c and then a leg d and then a peak d and that can't take you anywhere on a monthly basis you can't get there until what did i say i think it was february or march so that's really bullish looking out so what we're looking at here i do not like d's that are made way below the previous high, major high. In this case, it was peaked at 151.79, the TLT, Lehman 20 Treasury Bond Fund on the 22nd of September, pulls back sharply to 141.45, October the 11th, rallies peak A, peak B, fractional B, and then it goes C and D on Friday, it goes to leg D, and now it's pulling back at 148.56. And if you look at the weekly chart, you're really making lower highs and lower lows, so that says to me that the TNX, which I showed my subscribers to my opening call over the weekend, I won't go there, I'll just show you the actual TNX chart, made that peak D in the daily chart 
uh, under 17, which is 1.7%, and it was only a peak C in the weekly chart, but the technicals are starting to weak. So we're watching this really closely to say that the 10-year Treasury bond yield is making it's making lower lows and lower highs, and the pattern that I talk about very often uh, make, it makes a part of the core of the Chapman Wave methodology, where you, you've got three um, basic patterns, straight line up, straight line down, that's one, cup formation, or it could be a V-shaped formation, two, or an arch formation, uh, um, inverted V is three, and you can make one and three, which is straight down, arches over, fails at a peak A or B, and breaks down and takes out the left side low. That's exactly what happened there. It fails at peak A, goes A minus, takes out, and within three sessions so far, it hasn't gone back to the left side low. And this is the same, that bonds are coming, oh, running a little bit, heels are coming down, this was the space, back above the thousand meters. That was a chapter of interesting. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're, uh, we're looking at uh, CLF. This is Cleveland Clips and Flat Roll Steel and Iron Ore Pellets. Uh, this is uh, interesting because it made a double top at 26.51 from uh, July or August. And then it did that just three weeks ago. It ran up and hit exactly the same number, pulled back. So this is a peak C1, C2 so far in the monthly chart. <clears throat> it's looking quite good. And the question I want you to know, where, I'm out of it now. Where would you, I've taken profits, where would you get back in? This is a tough one because 
steel is all over the show. If you look at the SLX, which is the, um, where did I, oh, I typed that in the den by mistake, instead of typing it right here, SLX, which is the ETF, has a little bit of the same chart, not as good. It has popped up at 56, but that's mostly because U.S. Steel has had a spectacular gap up today, up 5% to 27.53. I, You know, the whole thing about the uh, infrastructure, I didn't read anything how the steels are going to really benefit. Uh, they, they certainly should. I just didn't read anything about it. And uh, that's a little difficult for me. So what I have said is, why don't you just nibble here? You're a person who has done very well with this uh, instrument. Probably I should ask you because you're the one that's done very well. I'm just going to say nibble here at 23.64 and I'd have a one and a half point stop on this just this, this entry point. Why? Because I do not like a sharp pullback like this. It has one pop up if there's going to be at 23.65 right now. If it touches 23 point, uh, $23.10, $23 tomorrow, says no, there was just a pop up and it's going to fail. That's number one. Number two is the weekly chart. Technically, the, the MACD is weak, the stochastic is weak, the unbalanced volume is pulled back, but it is slightly positive with the nine period over the 14 period. So that says to me it's in play, but it could be within a rectangle formation, just chopping up to the 24s and then pulling back to the 21 or 22s, then bouncing again. So this is just a way to play it. And what I would do is if over the next two days, if by Wednesday, it's taken out, to, even if it's today, but if it's taken out the 24.22 high that it made today, I would then add another little bit. And I'd just treat it gently. Why? Because if this is going to act very well, monthly chart looks great. Weekly chart looks good, but it's sideways, choppy, choppy. We've seen how long a rectangle formation can, can last. And the daily is not that. It's just like a news-related pop-up. So I want to see follow through. So I would only add another little bit if it takes out today's high, whether it's today or tomorrow, it doesn't matter. And then I'd raise the stop on the initial position that we, you would have just got into right here, 23.64, and let it go. And that's all. I mean, you, I, I need to be convinced that it's making another cup or V-shaped formation to the upside and not just having a bounce on news. That's most important. I don't want you to get to, oh, I can't see the chart, sorry. Uh, GT, you sent the, uh, sent the chart over. For some reason on that particular computer, I'm just not able to get it. Let's see what I've done here, uh, how updated I am on the Comp X and the, oh, I haven't done this at all. This is a leg E in the weekly chart. This is the, the NASDAQ composite index is still in G slash C in the monthly chart right there. And now we've got a new buy signal. This almost looks like the semis. So this goes, Peak A. Now, I've got to do that a little more carefully. That high on the fifth was at 14.50865. Oh, yep, 50.09. So it didn't do it. So this is A right here. Chapman Wave methodology. I didn't get a chance to do that on Friday, technical Friday. I had a session and I got a couple of emails. So I'm, I'm sorry, if you got if you sent an email and I haven't answered the email from Friday, I know some of you did, I'm going to get to them in a moment. But if I missed anything, just quickly send me something. So this is a leg D in the composite index with a new all time high on Friday, an all time clo high close. And it had a 16,053.39 high today's high is a little low 16,038. So we're watching this really closely because, as I say, I think we're in for just a little bit of a pullback, especially in the QQQ today and maybe tomorrow or the next day. It just pops to D and then we start to pull back. And one of the reasons why I say to subscribe is we are going to start insurance right now. Um, we just that's that's what we do. So we'll see what happens. Now, I needed to do this. Where did it go? Where did it go? So a question over the weekend was, Goog, could I look at Goog? Where would you enter a position? <clears throat> well, Google had a round number today, 3,000.00. Do you remember when, I thought, was it the S&P had that round number? Was it even 3,000? And then, whoop, it just went right through it as if so what? All I can say is I watch round numbers, but when you've got very, very high-priced stocks, sometimes you get the round number because somebody says, hey, I don't need 3,025. I don't need 3,000 and a penny. 
I three thousand is good enough. Boom. So they put in the bid or the ask or whatever it is. Uh, you've got uh, three thousand as a round number high today. It popped to three thousand and twenty point sixty nine. It's still up twelve point thirty at twenty nine ninety seven. But we had a doji candle on Friday in leg D. We've got another candle. So the day, I mean, we're an hour and five minutes into the to the trading session, we can't even talk about it as a candle. Just to say, at this particular moment, it does look like a doji, and it's in leg E in the weekly chart. So we're going to be watching this very, very close. I've called this F alphabet in the in the monthly chart, but really everything about it says it's probably recycled. And this is F slash B, the same as the S and P. It'll have a pullback at some point for a monthly peak and then it goes on to new highs that's the way i'm looking at where would i enter it i just have to say that you've got to have patience at this particular point i think you could see further upside action but if you are seeing me for an entry point give me a yell if this thing trades if it closes under 29 20. what's that 70 points below i mean that's just nothing just give me a yell and we'll look at it to see how the technicals are holding, if there's still internal strength and that this leg can still go even higher, certainly in the weekly chart. But if you want to know where I would look for risk reward between 29.38 and 29.11, that's the, the moving averages. That's where I look as if to say, is this holding well? Has the MACD even turned down? At this point, it's still fantastic. Stochastics at 86%, very good. On balance volume suggesting we are getting rather overboard, just shorter term. Okay, uh, NVD, NVDA, um, uh, eyeballs in the Dan says, uh, comment, uh, on bond yields. Oh, I'll do that. Okay, Gary, just in a moment. So NVIDIA uh, upgraded by BTG. Uh, it has a high, much higher a price tag, 375. Then the question is, Basel on Friday, NVIDIA had a round number high of 314. Uh, uh, is this a negative or positive going forward? So this is the way I look at it. I like to look at round numbers. I especially look at round numbers on major sell-offs, not the upside. I do it more on the downside. Why? Because that's when people are just getting rid of stuff. They just say, get me out of 300. You know, I, just, I don't want to go 0.20 or anything, just 300, boom. What's really important here is that... Um, this has made a peak C if there's no new high today. He made a 314 round number high. What I would say is this, if it goes above, that's okay. At any point, if it breaks down and goes to 292 or lower, that round number 314 is very significant. It says, watch out, because that's your major resistance, even if it goes high. That's up. Up back, that was 130. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50.
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back, and uh, just a couple of things. Look, he has a peak D in the one-minute chart of the E-mini. It started this run at about eight uh, at forty-six ninety-three. The last run that was just after ten o'clock went to the Doji candle peak D and rolled over. And now we've taken out that left side low. What I'd say to subscribers is that we've got to watch real closely because I'm, I'm finding it much more difficult right now to actually find stocks that I feel comfortable uh, recommending not just as a quick trade, but more as a, I'm trying to position us, uh, us for later on uh, as we go into year end, into the beginning of next year. And as a result, I'm finding that some it's specific stocks that might be good, but as sectors, um, it's almost the exact opposite. Look at the, look at this. If you, if you go to, uh, oh, let me finish that thought. There. Yeah. So this this is once again turning down. We made a peak E at 4707.00 round number high in the um, 10 minute chart. It's pulled back. And basically, what I'm looking and saying to subscribers is we're, we're going to watch this really closely because the technicals, other than some of the Chapman Wave methodology techniques that we've used and many times successfully. This is really tough. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, over the weekend, you thought that the, the bill was going to be dead. And then all of a sudden, you've got um, Republicans uh, voting with Democrats, and they got this pass. That means it's going to be much easier now to try to get the huge um, trillions of dollars that bill through. Uh, what we're looking at here is how does, how does that impact the market on the short term? The longer term implications, we know debt is never great. So we don't know, we don't even know which you know which which president will be involved when uh, the the Pied Piper comes along to say hey remember guys you got a little bit of a debt here <laughs> so that's something completely different what we are looking at here is how does the as all I'm interested I couldn't care politically uh, even economically in the shorter term I'm looking at how does the market respond that's the only thing remember my my theme about bad news it's not that there's there's always enough news to be bad it's what does the market perceive it to be and if the market perceives that any news that it's hearing is bad and it acts poorly it means it's taking whatever is being said to heart and that's all we need to be thinking of so that's that's a phase we're in right now with the technical say i mean let, let, let's just go through this now i can do it but there was another i'll just, I'll just do google because i'm not able to forget and then run out of time. So Google, round number 3,000 high um, in leg D. Now, the issue that I'm making here is that look how many in the Chapman Wave methodology I said, D is where other things can happen. Doesn't mean to say it has to crash or tank or, or, or restart or do anything, but D is where you lift your foot off the accelerator for the moment, hover over the brake to say, okay, let's see where you're going to go next. You don't even have to change position. You just want to it's where a yellow light goes on and the yellow light can go back to green or can go to red. And that's all there is. Uh, so you have a little cautionary moment here. A uh, question came up. So semiconductors, could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So the semiconductors, Doji Candle, 
on Friday, makes a higher high today, goes above 299.74. It's now below that. That's with the days young. I mean, it's barely started. But it had a higher height, went to 300.20. So it touched the 300. May became, we'll see if it's going to become a friend, just like 36,000 for the Dow. Is that going to be, become a friend, a friend or, or um, a, a repellenzo? Okay, so here we go. Semiconductors. Look at applied material. Applied material, leg D. Big, big move to an all time high of 154.89. And now it's trading at 151.92, down a dollar 37. Look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA, has good today, up almost 10 and 307.47, shows strength all the way through. Look, the, look, there was that pullback in the unbalanced volume, even though you can't really see it was a red candle, even though it was the close after an all-time high, and now you're bouncing. So, yes, it could go to a leg D. Uh, I want you to look at, we'll go through them. Uh, Intel, someone asked me about Intel. Is this time for Intel to, well, Intel is, from what I've heard, has at least a finally got a product that is a viable product before they were just doing absolutely the wrong things. But is it too late? Is it perfect? I don't know. All I can say is that it's, it was lagging at a huge gap from a, a peak D back in around about the 18th, 19th or so of October, comes plummet to gaps down, plummets down all the way to the 47s, and now it's at 51, nice four-point bounce, trying to fill the gap. But I suspect from the chart that a little bit more work has to be done with Intel before we can consider it as a viable entity for a more intermediate term uh, buy. Let's go to something like we don't look at very often, which is Xilinx, Z-L-N-X. Xilinx goes to right here. Look at leg C in the weekly chart, leg C in the monthly. Uh, this is in the semiconductor area, but it's in leg D. Huge move up. I mean, a whopper in one week. <clears throat> It goes from the 180 level to the 203.61 high today. So that's what I'm saying. That in individual areas, advanced micro devices, uh, you've got even there, you've got some kind of a variance. And in this particular case, you've got a couple of stocks in the same house that are really acting poorly. I haven't got to them all right now. But what we are looking at is the leadership is there. And as long as that leadership is there, that is a big, big bullish sign. Uh, for the semiconductors. So there's a leg D in the daily, a leg D in the weekly, leg G slash B in the monthly. Advanced micro devices up four point up three three point four percent at one forty one point oh three all time high in leg D. So you you can see that we've got to be very selective. If you look at the IYT, which is the um, the I shares of the I <laughs> I love this title. I shares Dow Jones Transport Average Index Fund. Oh, 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 by the time you said it, anything could have happened. It looks like it wants to make a leg C in the monthly chart above the 287.40 high of, uh, of May of this year. It did a big dreaded H pattern, then turned around for a cup formation. And, to, and the high on Friday was 281.45. Is that updated? Yes, 281.45. And that's a really good sign. But if you look at CSX, almost by itself, why is that not working? CSX uh, has had a spectacular move. Gone to peak, E, little doji candle high, um, all-time high, in fact, at 36.45. It's at 35.55, gone sideways here. Huge move. Is this an, a new leg A? Well, this is your starting point, peak A, B, C, D. It's, it's had two weekly peak Ds with big pullbacks. And this time it went to a single leg A up to a new all-time high. I've got an up arrow. So all I can say is it went, it started this move above the previous high. Uh, sorry, above the previous low of 27.70. This low was 28, uh, 29.49 on the 24th of the week of the 24th of September. So this could, in fact, be E. I should have done it in the beginning. E slash A. Could be old E, just a pop-up to complete this move, or a brand new move to the upside. My thinking here is on, on I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt just for now and say um, there's a little bit more of a technical aspect that says A, but just as a traditional thing, I'm calling this E slash A to say picked up that previous D. And we'll see what happens. But that's a big thing for the transports. Where's Jets? Jets is trading up sharply. 
This is the US Global Jets ETF. Wow, what a nice move. Single leg A up here. Yeah? Is that no, it hasn't gone to a recovery high, but this is good. It's up 32 cents at 24.94. This is the global chest, this is US gas balance. Very nice. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 147. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Just let me get to this before I do a recap. Uh, all about, let's see, uh, I just tuned in. So if you have not already, can you give your analysis of PLTR for reporting earnings tomorrow morning? I am long. So look, this is a PTR is up sharply today. It's up $1.07 and $27.07. You remember when it was back here, I was saying, this is, I had a call and I said, this is the first time I can see it actually starting to build strength as the technicals are improving. And then it went from the... Uh, that went from the 23, 24 area, and now it's at 27. Sounds like not much, three points, but look at the way it's done. What I'm going to say is, if you are long and you're going to hold it through earnings, because you are long and you've got somewhat of a gain, I'm going to say to you, you might want to, uh, you ask my opinion. My opinion is maybe take just a little bit off so that at least you've got in your pocket, you've got something for your gain. You can hold the rest. The way it's acting, even if it, unless it's really disappointing, Palantir technology software platforms uh, and plunges below 2530, you might be able to withstand just even a minor pullback because it looks like it wants at leg D. I don't like these that, that stall underneath the previous high. That makes me just a little cautious. But all I'm saying is you can hold this for now. But I would actually take just a little bit off. And what if it explodes upwards? That's fantastic. So you took a little bit off. That's money management. And the rest is just a bonus. 
just to protect yourself a little bit. That's all I'm saying. We just don't know how our stocks react when it comes to. So let me just do this. So the TLT, the question was, what can I just do a review? Yep, P P D. Remember, this is a potential uh, top under the previous high. Normally, I just don't like that because it takes a little while to digest the gains then. So that says yields are stuck in a range. Let's just do that. Let's look at crude oil. Oh, I don't know if I did crude oil today. Crude oil rallied. Now it's starting to stall. I think that top that was made at 85.41, which for subscribers, we, we did that. Uh, and then we're out of it now. What we're looking at is that crude oil could be pulling back. So all I'm going to say is just to make it as simple as possible. The Dow is up 126, but I see subscribers. If you keep up the gains, at the end of the day, it's only up 30. And it says it's starting now to stall, and then we expect just to use their own to pop up your leg. And then I think we have a little bit of digestive phase. We'll deal with that, and I'll talk about